Thank you, Linda, very much for that kind introduction. Uh, and I also want to thank the Press Club for allowing me to come make a presentation today. I think the last time I was here, maybe in 09, when uh, I had a couple of bills that had to do with school board reform. And uh, so I enjoyed visiting with, with all of y'all. Y'all do a great job. Uh, when Linda Johnson walked in, I thought maybe I'd made a mistake. I'm not supposed to talk about education. So I, had, I left my education notes at home. Also, I want to welcome a number of people here. Uh, Barbara, good to see you on the city council. And um, a number of the people over here at the table uh, to my left uh, were very supportive of what we tried to do with the gasoline tax. And again, I want to thank y'all very much. And Booth, your group does a great job too. If I left you out, I'm sorry. I think I got most everybody. But anyway, um, again, thank you very much for allowing me to, to make a presentation. Um, but before I start, let me, let me just maybe make a few general observations. Uh, first thing, um, whether you believe it or not, in my opinion, I think it's accurate. There's some very good people in the legislature. They do a great job and they try to do the right things. And having been in the House for the last 10 years, I found making change is very, very difficult. And it takes a lot of courage. The many times you read about the state, you show up show up last in all the bad areas and first, excuse me, I'm gonna reverse that. We show up bad in all of, of the, of the uh, good areas and bad in all the, la in the, in the last of the, in the other areas. And that's just frustrating to me. Right? There's no reason for that to happen. I, I don't, you know, you sit there and you, you look at the legislation, there's a simple one, there's very good people there. But, but why that happens, I don't know. And the gasoline tax falls right into it. Um, sometimes I, I think, and for some reason, I don't know why it is, we just want to accept mediocrity. And that's not the right thing to do. The citizens don't deserve that. We're good at a lot of things, and uh, it graded very few, if any. And that frustrates me too. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions after this as to whether or not I'm accurate or not. But that's just my personal opinion. And I've talked to a lot of people, and we just, we just, for some reason, don't change and don't do the things we need to do. And, and that's going to get me to where we are as far as the fiscal cliff. You know, we had a task force, which I thought did a marvelous job. And I thought they made some very, very good recommendations. And nothing ever happened. I've got, I've got to applaud uh, Julie Stokes and also Barry Ivey. But it's very lonely out there when you try to do it by yourself. If you don't have a coalition, particularly if you don't have the government behind you, whatever it is that... Uh, you want to do it makes it it makes it like I said difficult one of the other things that frustrates me about where we are and what we're doing is I'm not sure what the priorities of this state are um, you know we're limited in the dollars that you have and you would think that you would attempt to try to be as I said before great at something take a number of years ago 20 to 25 years ago North Carolina their governor decided that they wanted to make higher education number one and you see where it is right now. It, it, they're, they're, they're pretty good in their higher education system. Um, before I start on the gasoline, a number of other topics that I have here, let me just read something that Jeremy Alford, I think y'all may have gotten it. Uh, he sent it out just a couple of days ago. And this is a quote from the senior policy analyst at the Tax Foundation. And what they said was, despite the tough politics, 26 states raised taxes on motor fuels in the past four years. 26 states. The eight states that raised taxes this year include Tennessee and South Carolina, deep red states dominated by fiscal conservatives. We've seen more bipartisan agreement in raising tax, gas taxes than almost any other tax out there. Now I made that comment in closing on the floor and uh, it talked about the number of states that had, had passed gasoline taxes, the number of state, states that had, had voted you know, for Donald Trump. And I don't, I, I can't figure out why some of us, and I've said before, there are really good people in the legislature. They try to do the right thing. But change, again, like I said, is so difficult. And major change is extremely difficult. And it takes courage. It really does take courage. And I really believe that the members of the legislature have courage, but for some reason just can't pull the trigger. I'm not sure why that is, it's, it, it, but, it, but it needs to be done. 
Um, let me just say one other thing too before I get into where I think we ought to go with, with, with the gasoline tax over there. Um, I'd like to repeat something I said at, uh, at closing on my bill, and that is to thank the members of the House Ways and Means Committee, and particularly those with the Capital Region Legislative Delegation who showed courage in voting to move the bill favorably to the floor. It did take a lot of courage in their part, and to a certain degree, some of them got beat up a little bit, which I didn't think was fair. And also, given the recent news, I want to particularly praise the thoughtfulness and resolve of my colleague, Julie Stoke. I know she will bring the same kind of courage to this new personal challenge that she has, and I extend her and her family my heartfelt thoughts and prayers. Uh, I do want to say a few words uh, as an afterthought because I think it's critically necessary as to why this issue will continue to be a tr tr tremendous burden on our state if it's not addressed. You know, right after this occurred, I mean, it may have been just before the vote, you know, LA1 had a problem. And I was at an event, and a young man came up to me who worked for a company that's just on the other side, maybe in Brewery. He said, let me tell you what happened to him. He said, I had to make a delivery just on the other side of Port Allen. But because my weight limit was too much, I had to drive all the way to the Sunshine Bridge and around just to get to Port Allen to make my delivery. That's sad. But we, we did, and, and yet we didn't, we didn't do anything about it. And how about the bridge that's down on LA 30? I mean, what's it gonna take? I, 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 you know, and I said this in closing on the floor, it, we don't want something to happen like happened in Minnesota where the bridge collapsed and people were killed. And the same, that was on an interstate. And the same thing on Interstate 40 along Oklahoma. The bridge collapsed. Is that what we want to wait for? I don't want to wait for it. So let me just maybe talk a little bit about some things that I think that we may need to, to try to do to solve the problem. They're going to be out of the box a little bit, uh, but I, I really think that uh, these are some things we need to consider. I don't know if you saw it or not, on the news, but May, an outfit called TomTom, Tom, a national uh, navigation and mapping company, released its 2017 traffic index, which ranked Baton Rouge the 13th most, con con most congested city in America. That's ahead of Chicago, Austin, and Houston. Among mid-sized cities on the list, Baton Rouge ranked second worst behind Honolulu, since Honolulu is just on the cusp of achieving large city status. Perhaps next year we'll get to be number one. That'll be an exciting moment. We may move up also for some other reasons. According to this report, it takes drivers in Baton Rouge 26% longer than it should to drive anywhere in the city, and this is up by 3% from what they reported in 2016. The problem is also not just in the Baton Rouge area. New Orleans scores 20th worst in the nation in this report. And I know you're all aware, because everybody has talked about it, that we have horrible, horrible congestion, crumbling roads, and thousands of unsafe bridges. The needs for new capacity and repairs run into, not the M, but the B word, billions. According to another report released this year by TRIP, Louisiana's uh, congested and unsafe roads and bridges cost Louisiana motors a total of $6.5 billion statewide annually, and as much as $2,500 uh, $2, per driver in some areas annually. By contrast, increasing the gasoline tax only by 17 cents to improve the infrastructure conditions would have cost the average driver about $113 a year. Figure it. It just doesn't make sense to me. What's more, based on conservative analysis, passing the bill in its original form would have created an estimated 65,000 jobs in Louisiana over the next decade and generated $26 billion in economic activity. Put simply, the current state of Louisiana infrastructure is a financial strain for our citizens and an anchor dragging on the Louisiana economy. Instead, what it could and should be a means for achieving greater quality of life for our people and a greater prosperity for our state is failing. I've got three areas I'm gonna talk about as things that we possibly should consider. One, from a state issue, second, from a regional issue, and third, you've got to applaud uh, Mayor Broom. She is at least trying. And she's put out something out there to try to solve the problem in our area here.
I would suggest we start by acknowledging the fact that when it comes to state budget practices and priorities, transportation infrastructure was long ago kicked to the curb. Sherry, am I right? <laughs> the majority of our time in the legislature now is spent on the general fund budget, solving the general fund deficit and preparing for the general fund fiscal cliff. That's all you hear. You spend an awful lot of time on that. Transportation infrastructure, of course, receives zero dollars from a state general fund. And because of that, based on the capital building logic, it's like we get a free pass to pretend that transportation infrastructure has no needs. Well, you might say transportation already has a funding stream, the existing gas tax, to which I would respond, other departments also have seven uh, separate revenue streams but still receive general fund dollars to cover the general cost of government like salaries, benefits, and administration. By no fault of DOTD, those things are forced to be paid out of the gas tax, leaving less for infrastructure. To be clear, I chose to pursue the, pursue the increase in the gasoline tax because it's the closest thing of a user fee for transportation, but it failed. But that doesn't leave us off the hook for addressing the urgent needs. Countless people in, uh, in, across Louisiana pay taxes into the general fund to support services like K-12, higher ed, public health, and they themselves do not need, so, and they may not use what they have to do as far as transportation is concerned. A lot of people don't use high school education or, or uh, higher education. Their kids are gone, but they still pay to the general fund for it. If during the past session, the will was not there to pass a gasoline tax solution, then we have no choice but to ask for general fund. Ask for general fund solution, I would say to my colleagues on the money committees, do not solve the $1.2 billion fiscal cliff, solve it for $1.7 billion fiscal cliff, because infrastructure needs $500 million. Again, some folks might say, wait, that's irresponsible to steal general fund for transportation and make the deficit even worse. Which I would again respond, we have a half a million, I mean $500 million infrastructure deficit, and it's irresponsible to ignore it just because the structure of the budget gives us a pass. There are 31 states that use the general fund dollars that contribute to transportation projects. They found a way to do it. You know why? It's a priority. That's a priority to them. And I'm going to go back again to my st earlier statement. I'm not sure what our priorities are in this state. We need to establish them and we need to fund them because again, I see that we are good at a few things, great. Don't tell me what we're great at. Probably having a good time, drinking a little bit, doing whatever. But I'm just saying we need to do some long soul searching. That's just my opinion. And it takes an awful lot of people, not just me, but in particular from the governor to the legislature and people like you to find a way to make things better. I'm not saying it'll be easy. I'm not saying I have all the answers for how it would work. I'm pleased that a member of the Capital Region Legislative Delegation, Tony Bacala, who has just been selected as Vice Chair of the House Republican Caucus, during the session, he had a bill that would gradually phase in using the existing vehicle sales tax revenue for infrastructure over 10 years. That's not a bad idea either, but it failed. But I think we need to bring it back up again and see if we can do it in a way where we can expedite the use of those funds so we can do some things that would at least attempt to help the transportation problems that we have in this state. Again, priority. On the regional level, given the interaction by the state this year and the potential for continued interaction by the state moving forward, at some point regions like the Capital Regional Legislature, Legislation may have to take matters into their own hands. This we cannot do, but we may need to talk about trying to change the, 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 uh, the Constitution, especially for projects as big as important as the New Mississippi River Bridge, widening I-10 from the bridge to the split. No parish can pay for these on their own. In fact, even with uh, Mayor Broome's proposal, we can't pay for those. So we've got to find a way to do it. So my suggestion would possibly be Consideration given the legislation next year to establish a multi-parish district with the authority to seek revenue increases by via a vote of the regional region's citizens. This route poses its own problems, of course, because we're already the highest in the nation sales tax. The Constitution also, as I said before, prohibits us from doing this. As I said earlier, too, I got to applaud uh, 
they have grown for what she's trying to do. I've not had an opportunity to look at it. I, I, I'm not sure all that she's proposing, but I do want to give her credit for at least attempting to try to do what she thinks is right for our city. I have a couple more years left in the house. It's frustrating and embarrassing that progress takes so long when it comes to addressing our various crises. However, we've been able to implement ethics reform, education reform, and in this past session, criminal justice reform. Now it's time to reform our infrastructure investment policies. I don't want to accept mediocrity in this state. Our transportation challenges aren't going away. I personally, as all of you in this room, love Baton Rouge and love Louisiana too much to stop trying. I want to continue to visit with our colleagues, especially those in the House leadership, and say, let's put together a solution. We've got to pull together on this. It's too important. The main reason it's too important is this year was a critical year for us to try to pass this tax. Next, this coming session is a general session. The next session after that, guess what happens? Election year. The next session after that is what? Fiscal session, I mean a general session again. So my point in saying it is that I know it didn't pass, but I applaud and thank everyone that attempted to try to make it pass. But we've got to do something. I have listed a few suggestions in here that we could possibly try. Are they controversial? Yeah. Anything you try to do of major change is controversial. But there's only one way to try. This is like if you don't buy if you don't buy a lottery ticket, what are the chances you win the lottery? That ain't very good. So if we don't try, you know, the chances of us getting this problem solved, they ain't very good. So I'll just close by saying it's been a pleasure to be here. I know I've talked pretty fast, but the town only have what 15 or 20 minutes. So if you missed anything, I'll be glad to go back over it again with you. But uh, it's been a pleasure being here. I thank all of y'all for attending. And uh, I guess I'll open it up for questions now. So if anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. The education issue, we'll have to get Linda to answer that. And if it's a citywide issue, I'll get Barbara, and we'll take it from there. Okay, yes, ma'am. Steve, the, you talked about the frustrations over the gas tax. We know you're, you're upset about that. But the frustrations of vision by the legislature, the fact that they don't look beyond the current budget. Can you talk a bit about that and what you foresee we should be doing to plan five, ten years down the road when we're already so far behind? That's a good question. The question is, what, what, what do we need to do and how do we go about planning five and ten years down the road for whatever, even though it has to do with this particular day, is infrastructure, but for wherever it is we're trying to go. You know, it's interesting that you ask that because in our state, uh, our governor is extremely powerful, and they're elected every four years. But the interesting thing about that is that they go in a, a lot of times, you know, with having a platform or whatever it is that they want to do. Now, a lot of times they'll tell people what they want to hear. We need to hold in the next election the gubernatorial candidates speak to the fire and ensure that what they say they want to do, they're going to do. Because everybody like me is going to tell people what they want to hear so they can get elected. So that, that, is, that is a great question, and I'm not sure who needs, um, my wife has told me, she said, do y'all ever get together and sit down as a, as a body in the legislature and prioritize and plan and see where you want to go and see things that you want to do? To my knowledge, no. And that's a good point. We should do that. Um, I'm new at this. I mean, I've only been involved. I didn't know 10 years seemed like a long time. When I first came in the legislature, I, was, I thought pretty good looking. Didn't wait too much. It's not bad, but look what happened. <laughs> so anyway, my point in saying that is that's a good question. I don't have the answer, but we need to think about that. If you've got suggestions on trying to do that, I'd be willing to talk to people. But it all boils down to leadership. It all boils down to people uh, having ideas, getting together, and discussing them, and putting in a priority basis, and let's go do the normal thing. Yes, sir. Uh, earlier, you had some pretty flattering commentary for those that were in support of the tax. I know you had a little heated dis, you know, presentation on the floor where you expressed some frustration for those in opposition to the tax, specifically having said that they had lied and also uh, that we could not, and I quote, become the state of Americans for prosperity. D uh, can you give us some, suggest some examples of distortions that you believe were made, and are you in opposition to 
grassroots organizations that go door to door to voice their sentiments on the political process. No, not, not at all. But let me just say this. I'm a Republican. As I said, I've been a Republican since I was eligible to vote. That's a long time ago. In fact, it's so long ago, you could put all of us in a phone booth and still have room for two or three more people. That's where I was back as a Republican. But what disappoints me about the Republican Party, and not just probably the Republican, but also the Democratic Party, we should be to try to do the right thing. This is the right thing to do. Granted, taxes, I don't like taxes, you don't like taxes. Anybody here like taxes? Raise your hand. Nobody likes taxes. But how are we gonna solve this problem? And this is a major problem in our area. How can Adam now, and how can Mike go out and try to get people to come into this city? And we've got horrible transportation problems, and Souls, but I don't think our school systems are quite as good as they should be. So my point in saying it is, I applaud people for getting involved in the process. I'm just saying that if it's the right thing to do, regardless of whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or Independent, do the right thing. I tell people in the legislature, they come in, they're all worried about getting reelected. I said, let me ask you this, the person who you took the place of, tell me three people back who was in your position. Some can, some can't. If they can, I'll say, okay, tell me one good piece of legislation that they introduced. Can't do that, but I'll say, well, if you can, that's good. Tell me on right to work. How do they vote? So you know what I tell them the motto is? Just do the right thing, because nobody's remembering who the heck you are anyway. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It takes courage. So I hope I've answered your question, but I'm not all for grassroots people going door to door. I have no problem with that. But when they, they go door to door and they say it's only because of a tax, they mad about a tax. I'm, I'm a Republican. I don't like taxes. But in this particular case, I like the tax. Well, could I have a brief follow-up then? Many of those grassroots activists said there is a ton of pork barrel projects in the budget to include an itemized list of $40 million, many of which were in John Alario's district uh, that are of questionable value. And those that many of those who were involved in that grassroots campaign believe the funds exist within the budget to meet our transportation needs without having to resort to tax increase. Do you have an effective argument against that? or? or I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not on a money committee, but that doesn't exclude me from answering the question. Yes. Here's, let me tell you, I've been there for 10 years, and we have trimmed the budget, and attempted to continue to trim the budget. I challenge you, now granted, you're talking about a guy who's got far more experience than I do, and he may know how to maneuver the system around <laughs> and get the things that he needs to get to his area. But I challenge you to find one, anything that's in that budget, that a sport barrel come to me and will eliminate it. I don't know where they are. I mean, John Schroeder and I are very good friends. He's fought it all the time. All the people on, on appropriations have fought it a good bit. And I just don't see, I mean, like the time, Sherry, we had uh, the, the Office of Motor Vehicles, they were going to shut them down or whatever. Remember, we, we had a, a, a crisis with, we, we didn't have enough money. Well, okay, so let me ask you this. You want to go 30 miles to get your driver's license renewed? Is that important? Should we leave it open? Is that wasted money, having too many office and motor vehicles too close to each other? I mean, I'm just saying, common sense comes into play sometimes. And so I'm just saying, again, you gotta do the right thing. And I, my, my position on this is, this is the right thing. I mean, I get reelected, I'm sorry. I'm gonna stand up what I think is right. I appreciate you taking the question. Yes, sir. Other than the sales tax increase, what significant tax has been passed in the last 10 years <coughs> no, I don't recall any. I mean, I, I went in in 08, and that's of course when Governor Jenner was there, and he didn't, he didn't raise any taxes. And, um, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. Does it, did anybody in the media know the answer to that? I, I, I don't recall. I'm sorry. I'll try to look it up, but I, uh, I don't have an answer. Well, that, doesn't that tell us something? Yes, yeah, probably. We don't want to improve the quality of Louisiana. Well, but then on your side, you're saying that, and this gentleman over here is saying that we have waste. And I understand. And a lot of people think that way. Let me tell you the toughest thing we had on this bill. The people don't have any confidence in people like me. We say we're going to do one thing, we do another. And that's wrong. We've got to continue to do what we say we're going to do. 
The other thing is, they say, raise the money. This is going to be, you know, we're going to do this with the money. So we do something else. We got to quit doing that. And that's why this bill had some uh, companion bills with it. They were to make sure that the money is spent on what we say we're going to spend it on. So that's another problem we have is we got to do a better job ourselves of doing the things we say we're going to do. That's just my opinion. Yes, sir. Position on Mayor Broom's tax for infrastructure and EBR. Um, and my answer is I've not had a chance to review it. I don't have it. But again, as I said before, I do applaud the fact that she should at least try it. I think what she's trying to do is the right thing. I just don't know all the projects and all the things that she's uh, you know, asking to try to have in her, in her plan. Yes, ma'am. When you're talking about shifting additional general fund to DOT, Well, do I see that happen? Uh, I'll try. I'm not so sure I can make it happen because it is very, it's out there. It's pretty controversial. But other states have done it. We've got to review it and research it and see how they, you know, accomplish it. We have been talking about, when I went in in 08, we talked about taxation and fiscal reform. And I thought we were going to do that. But instead, we did ethics. And then we got a part and we did education reform. I really thought we were going to do it in my first four years um, as far as uh, fiscal reform. We've studied it, but nothing's happened. And it needs to happen. I mean, I thought the task force did a marvelous job. But again, it's controversial. Me personally, I think everything ought to be pushed down to the local level. I think the locals ought to have to vote on whether or not they want to raise or increase their homestead exemption. Why is that on the state level? Why can't we in a region have an opportunity to vote to whether or not we want to have a gasoline tax? We can't. So there's an all, you know, the other frustrating thing about it is, how many of y'all had a chance to look at Neil Abramson's bill to have a constitutional convention? Anybody look at that bill? That was a heck of a bill. If you looked at it, it, it covered all the bases. It figured out ways to, 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 to put the delegates in. It was not, you know, they weren't trying to protect their own little special interest and stuff, and he worked on the things that needed to work on. It was only going to deal with Article 6 and 7. Couldn't get out of the friggin' house. Give me a break. So I'm just saying, those are the kinds of things that takes courage. Can I ask a follow-up on that, though? In terms of the, the getting support for the gas tax, how much opposition did you run into? Because um, people who are Republicans didn't want to give the governor a win on the something. Did not hear that. Issue. The question was, how much opposition did I have from the Republicans that didn't want to have, uh, you know, allow uh, the governor to have a win? I did not hear that. And maybe underlying, but personally, I never heard that as a reason to, you know, to vote against the tax. The, the, the biggest problem, and I'm going to step on Scott's toes here a little bit, a couple of other people's toes maybe. Um, we didn't do a good job of grassroots with prices to do social media and do some things that got the people involved because they were frustrated and get them to contact their legislator to tell them, but don't want you vote for this or else. We didn't do a good job of that in my opinion. Um, we just couldn't get traction. I, I, you know, people, I know that people are, are after the sales tax of a penny are taxed out and maybe, but we didn't have any other time. I mean, we, we had to do it now. We're going to have to wait, as I said before, four or five years from now, unless we do some of the things that I mentioned today. So I did not hear that answer to that question. Never heard that at all. Following on Melinda's second question, she asked, how do you see the um, House dealing with the fiscal cliff? Are they going to be able to fill it? Uh, we have to, for one. Uh, the second thing is, there, there are a number of people out uh, talking about it now, the Republicans. And um, I think they've got some pretty good ideas. I think they're working towards it. Uh, hopefully, we can get together and come up with a game plan and bring in people that I have an awful lot of respect for on the Democratic side. I think Gene Rolls is a great guy. We need to talk to Gene. I think Mike Danahay is unbelievable. I think 
Major Tebow, and I'm sorry if I'm leaving people out, but we all got to sit down and talk about the problem. We all got to get together and figure out how we're going to solve the problem. But again, like I said, I'm for allowing the locals to, to, to have more authority. That's one of the recommendations of, to, to have one centralized collecting agency. You talk to the, some of the you know people in municipal and what have you, they'll fight you for it. But it's common sense to me. And maybe I'm just not hitting the head with a tennis ball too much. <laughs> It seems to me like a lot of this stuff you want to do. Yes, sir. Um, Louisiana follows a lot of fads, and the, when Ronald Reagan came in, he said the country that built the Hoover Dam, the Panama Canal, the Liberty Ships, the interstate system, the government was a problem, and that's about the start of where the middle class flatlined. And you said that you don't have con people don't have confidence in you. We see uh, police officers go from 89,000 to 139,000 in Monroe. We see uh, Jay Darden get a $7,000 a year retirement increase. Um, and people like myself, I've been to Houston every weekend almost for the last year, and I see a whole different environment that's a flat out. Reminds me that Bill Gates had no competition. And he was, Do you have a question? Yeah, what do you have a question? I'm sorry. And, and my question is, how you can, how, do you think that's true that Louisianians have gotten it or, or have a uh, feeling that the state, that the state of the nature of government is a problem? And how do you reset it when the average public person will say things like, look at the police officer's rate increase, et cetera? Or like this gentleman saying that they are things that you don't know about supposedly have been published that said they were pork fat. Repeat the question. I got to be somewhere Friday. <laughs> 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 but in answer to your question, I assume is, what can we do to regain public confidence? That people just don't have the confidence in us that they should. And I'm going to be pretty simple with it. We just need to do what we say we're going to do. We don't. I mean, you know, we raid funds. We we, we say we're going to. You know, do this and we turn back around and do something else and you know, I, I, I'm going to get off the subject here just because I don't know how much time I have but a little girl came to me the other day and she was in the private sector at one time. She's now being funded through the state and she said, you know, the state's their own worst enemy. How do you solve this? And I said, well, give me an example. She said, well, copy paper. I worked a deal out for copy paper and now I can't do my contract with copy paper because I've got to go through the state and the state's five times more than what I, you know, the deal that I cut. Why can't the state do the same thing? Well, I'm sure what happened was, I'm guessing, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, somebody probably got caught stealing copy paper. So we filed a bill and now we got a statute that says you got to do your copy paper this way. And that's sad because she says the people in state government are good people and they want to try to do the right thing, but their hands are tied. She also said I, wanted, I needed to buy a bus. She said a bus would cost me seventy thousand dollars. So I said I'm not paying for seventy thousand dollars. Went through a foundation, went to eBay, and bought it for six. So my point is, those are things I can talk about. Why am I not doing something about it? Well, I'm over here with education. I'm over there with infrastructure. I'm over here with this. I'm over here with that. Maybe that should be a priority. We'll go back to priorities again. You're solving that problem. That would help. That would help. You know make people feel a lot better about government. So I don't have a real answer for that. I'm just telling you right now, and I'll, I'll play my life on it. The people in the legislature are good people. They try to do the right thing. Now, do some of them have the courage to do the right thing, or some of them persuaded by lobbyists or whatever to control what's going on? Possibly. But they're good people that are trying to do the right thing. It's just a matter of having priorities and pulling the trigger and doing it. And it seems simple to me, but maybe it's a lot more difficult than what I think it is. Are you satisfied with what the governor did to try to help pass again? Well, you don't have to shame yourself. He <laughs> <laughs> asked me, what, was I satisfied with, with the governor's assistance in helping us pass the gas tax? Well, uh, <laughs> the governor's a governor, and, and he did what he thought he had to do. I, I personally would like to have had a little bit more, but maybe he thought that by him lending his support to me as a Republican, it would hurt him. I don't know. But uh, let me just say this. In order for us to get anything done, uh, you know the three that I said we have done? We talked about criminal justice. John Bell got behind that. 
big time, and so did a lot of other people in the legislature. We had education reform, general was behind that, as well as a lot of education people behind it. We did ethics reform. So my point in saying that is, it starts with the governor. The governor, has, as I said, has an awful lot of power. But he also, and we do, we're part of the problem with that is, we need to get with the powers that be, whoever it might be, and visit and talk and come up with a thing for them, establish the priorities and all work together to solve the problems of the state. Because who do we affect? People like you. People like you. That's who we affect, and that's who we need to help. Yes, ma'am. What um, nonpartisan groups are you working with? Are you talking to PAR or some of the other groups that have been formed who are nonpartisan to and move forward this whole idea of infrastructure investment and that? Well, what's your plan? Absolutely. For the future or yes. what happened last year? Well, last year, Robert Scott came and testified yes. Yes. vehemently. He did a great job and helped us a lot. So we have not gotten to that stage right now crisis we're going to get back together again these are just some ideas that we have we're going to float them see where they are and if we get support then I'm darn right we're going to go to, to barry we're going to go to you we're going to go to everybody that we can to get as much support as you can because without public sentiment and without the proper people in places you just can't get anything done I, I, you know the prime example of that he had a great bill it was barry ivy he's out there on his own trying to make things happen and he saw where it went nowhere and I, and I applaud him for it. Julie, the same way. I mean, she worked hard at what she was trying to do. So you got to get coalitions. You got to get people. You got to have it mushroom and grow and expand. And when you do, you have the right people in the right spots, like the governor and the leadership of the House of the Senate, you get things done. But if you don't, I'm telling you, it is tough. Tough change is tough. People don't like change. People want to stay inside their own little comfort zone, and they get petrified. What's going to happen with this change? Am I going to be okay? Where is it this? Whatever it might be, people, you know, people just are insecure and don't like change. That's my opinion. Y'all tell me, y'all like change? Yes. <laughs> well, I like change too. But you and I are sort of weird. We went to school together. You know, I don't uh, talk to you. Know, but, oh yeah. So did you? Yeah. Lou, you were in yeah. school with us. We all like change. So we need to go back to everybody into the '60s again. I don't want to show y'all's age. I'm old. Y'all are young. Am I going too long? But Steve, Steve wants to, so to move forward, the you know, comprehensive plan requires a lot of groups to come together to right. buy into it. And it seems like there's already public opinion in Louisiana because the, I'm the LSU Public Policy Research Lab has done polling that says people want to invest in roads and infrastructure and bridges. I mean, that's, the, that's what you hear. So it's not like there's a lot of general sentiment against it, but there is within the legislative body where you sit. So how do you change that? You have to look at the leadership of the House. The question was that polls show that people want to make change within the infrastructure and, and the traffic problems we have in the state and the city. But the legislature just doesn't buy into it. What do we have to do to get them to buy into it? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I made the comment in closing that uh, the number of states, and, and I said this today, the number of states that had the courage to do it why our state didn't have the courage to do it, I think a lot of it had to do with timing. We, we just, we're in a quagmire right now. You know, we got a $1.2 billion deficit. They look at that and they don't want to look at having to raise taxes. It's just a tough time right now. But in order to get out of the situation you're in, it makes, you know, you got to you have tough decisions to make. And I don't know if these people, I'm not sure who asked the question over here about, you know, how far in advance do we need to plan out? You know, five, 10 years. I'd love for that to happen. You know, I'm not going to be around in five to ten years, of, but I don't have a problem with them tweaking it. So it, it just, it's just, uh, I, I don't know, but I, I hate to say this because I'm, I'm very optimistic and I'm going to do the right thing, but the system has a tendency to beat you down. And, you, and, and it's just, you just got to keep staying pumped up and you got to associate yourself like this table over here, over here, with good people and continue to be motivated and continue not to say, accept no for an answer. And, I guess part of my up here is because I was a coach. You don't know that I hated to lose. <laughs> and I just hate to lose at this stuff, too. Because I, maybe I'm wrong. And I don't mind if I'm wrong, they beat me. But if I'm right, they beat me. I'm irritated. That's just me. Yes, sir? Have you looked into privatizing roads? Yes. They asked if they looked at private. We looked at everything. Privatizing tolls, any and everything. Anything we can do to try to solve the problem, we'll look at. And 
And uh, to my knowledge, we haven't had very much pushback on it. You know, so we just got to get to that point where we can get enough done. Let me tell you another thing we need brought up. Let's assume that President Trump decides to have an infrastructure bill. We pump X, X millions or billions of dollars into our state, but we also got to match something. We can't match a darn thing. So those are the kind of things, I'm not sure if that ever comes up very much, but you need to think that way that, hey, you know, gives us an opportunity and we need to move forward and have the dollars and do the things that are necessary. Yes, sir. I think that one more back. Yes, sir. One of the groups that opposed this gasoline tax were the convenience store operators. Not that I know of. No. No, not convenience stores that I know of. I didn't hear that. I mean, well, I read that. You did? It's it's read. Read. Yeah. So I just want to ask you what your sense of the lobby on this issue did to it. I mean, we have supporters here, but they were obviously. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. What? influence did lobbyists and lobbying groups coalitions have on this on the failure of this measure well I don't, the, the people who were against the bill the only people that i know of and you may want to correct me there may have been others but uh you know obviously you had the americans for prosperity they they lobbied pretty heavily against it uh the trucking industry was not totally far it they were bits and pieces but they 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 I don't know how much they lobby, but I know that they were not in total support of that. It, it just served, in my opinion, from a lobbying standpoint, uh, it just boiled down to the heart of hearts of the people in the House who had to vote. The timing was bad, and they just couldn't pull the trigger. That's just, that's just my opinion. Uh, I don't think the lobbying effort, we lobbied hard, and we, we swayed some, some people's votes, but uh, I don't think any of the anti-people sway people's votes. I just think it was a very difficult time. Uh, we worked hard at it. We made some changes. We did what we thought was right. We just couldn't get, get over the hump. I, if it had gotten out of the House, I, correct me if I'm wrong, it would have passed the Senate. I think it would have passed the Senate. We just couldn't get out of the House. Am I getting paid overtime? Did it come out of the committee? Yes, sir. Yeah, that was the ones I was saying earlier, that the Baton Rouge delegation State, both Democrat and Republican stayed firm on that. And that's why it got out of ways and means, was through their vote of their coalition staying together. The problem we had was when it got to the floor, we needed 70 votes on the floor. And 70 votes is tough, gang. That's why, again, I didn't mention that, but you know, change is tough when you need 70 votes. You better make sure you get all your ducks lined up. You better make sure you run your homework. And you really don't need 70. You really need 75 or 76. Those that say yes, sometimes you can't find them. <laughs> Thank you all very much for inviting me.